Hello and welcome back. My name is Sean, also known as Chili Chump. Did you know that pH, or the measure of alkalinity or acidity, plays a key role in the development of your chili plants? That's what we're going to discuss in today's episode. If you've ever grown hydroponically, then you'll definitely know how important pH is to the health of your plants. In fact, if you get your pH wrong, you could potentially kill your plants. Now, when you're growing with soil, like I'm doing here, it's a little bit more forgiving, but pH is still hugely important if you want optimal growth and optimal yields at the end of your season. Are your chili plants not growing as big as you expect them to? Are you not getting the yields of chilies at the end of the season that you think you should be getting? Are you seeing nutrient deficiencies even though you are feeding them all the right things and you're watering them at the right times? The fact is you may have a pH problem. Soil pH affects the availability of nutrients to your plants. It doesn't matter how much nitrogen, phosphorus or potassium you give to your plants. If the pH is wrong, then it won't be able to uptake all of those nutrients. So to cut a long story short, if you don't want to watch the rest of the video, Optimize at around 6.5 pH for the health of your plants. That's not just the soil itself, but also the combination of the soil, the nutrients, and the water that you're feeding it. A lot of people will go and measure the pH level of the soil alone, and then they'll figure out the rest based on that. That's not ideal. What you want to do is you want to measure the pH of your soil once you've watered it. You also want to do it when you've added some nutrients as well because you will see a big difference. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate today with these three jars. I have some tap water, I have some rain water, and I have some rain water with some of my nutrients inside it. Let's first take a look at tap water. Now I'm not a big fan of using tap water on my chili plants, not just because of the pH but also because of some of the additives, in particular chlorine and chloramine. Now chlorine itself is actually not too much of a problem. You can fill up a big bucket of water with your tap and leave the lid off. After about an hour, most of the chlorine is going to evaporate. Chloramine, on the other hand, takes a little bit more effort to get rid of. Now we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about pH. So let's get to testing. Now you don't need to use anything too expensive or fancy to do the testing. You can get cheap pH testing meters on eBay and Amazon for about eight bucks, 10 bucks. But uh, I'm going to use this one. It has just been calibrated, so it should be pretty accurate. Let's give that a test. So straight away, I'm seeing 7.6, 7.5 pH. Now, I know my water is pretty hard, which means it has a lot of calcium in it. And that's definitely going to affect the pH. But tap water is going to be at best 7.0, which is neutral. But most tap water is actually going to be a little bit higher than that at about 7.3 to 7.8. So mine's settling at about 7.6. That is quite alkaline and I'm not happy with that. Next up, let's test my rainwater. I collect this off the roofs of my greenhouses and I store it in massive IBCs. And rainwater is on the acidic side. Let's just see what this measures at. So we can see that it's settling out at around 6.6, 6.7. And uh, that's definitely on the acidic side. I have had measurements where this is a little bit lower. Things like the amount of oxygen in the water, the temperature and all that can affect the pH. But generally you'll be able to at least see that it is acidic or alkaline and this is definitely acidic. This is my rainwater mixed with my nutrients. This is my typical mix that I'll be using at this time of year for my plants. So let's test that and see what we get. So that is at 6.2, 6.3. So it's fluctuating between those two. But definitely on the acidic side and definitely more acidic than my normal rainwater. Now, that's to be expected. A lot of the nutrients will drop the pH just because of the ingredients that they have. And just bear that in mind when you are trying to make adjustments, if you are going to be making adjustments. Let's take my tap water, which was at a pH of about 7.6, 7.7. And we're going to be adding my typical nutrient mix to this and we'll see what it does to the pH. Now, this is about 400 milliliters. I'm going to add four milliliters of my nutrient mix and We'll see what that does. 
Okay. So it's definitely dropped the pH and it's gone just below 7.0. It's at 6.8 pH. So definitely better than it was, but still not in the zone that I'd like it to be. Now, again, you've got to take into account the fact that your soil is going to buffer this somewhat and your soil is going to have its own pH. And when you mix all this together, you're going to get a different pH. But this is just giving an indication of how much of a difference the different water that you could use is going to have to your growing experience. So that's settling at 6.9, where this was 7.6, 7.7. So it's definitely done quite a bit to drop the pH. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't want to be using this on my plants and we'll get a fresh glass of water. As you can see, there is a big difference in the pH level of tap water versus rainwater. And that can play a significant part in the success or failure of your chili growing throughout the season. The good news is that if you are growing in soil, it's a little bit more forgiving than with hydroponics. You don't have to be as exacting with the pH, but you do want to go on to the acidic side rather than edging up towards the alkaline side. You're definitely going to see a lot of difference in the health of your plants, the growth of your plants and the yields that you get. This video is just a bit of an introduction to the importance of pH and chili growing. If you do want something that's more in depth and you want me to go into more detail, let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to share some of my secrets that I use to make sure that I get a successful season out of my chili plants. And of course, the pH level is one of the key components to that success. Anyway, I hope you learned something. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And until the next time, stay safe and stay spicy.